Okay, refraction is this post-scientific word for bending of a wave. And the reason that waves bend, light waves, sound waves, or earthquake waves, is that if they slow down, waves change, can change direction. Here's an example for us. So this is a bird's eye view. Imagine you're flying above a beach. What you actually see is the water waves sort of change direction as they enter towards the beach. And this is because as they approach the beach, they slow down, and that causes the waves to change direction. Okay, One of the, and of course, as the waves break down, that is what actually causes the waves from going like up and down to, to actually break and, and form the sort of uh, surf waves you normally see because the way water is slowing down. Right, here's an example of refraction. Uh, we've got a glass block. Notice that the sides of the glass block are parallel to each other, and we've got a light ray coming in from the left hand side. Okay, now you notice that when the light ray enters the glass block, it bends, it actually bends towards the normal, if you notice and then it bends again as it leaves. And if you notice the entry uh, ray and the exit ray are parallel, that's what those two red lines mean. Those two bits are parallel to each other and refraction has taken place at those two surfaces. If you get a, a prism, for example, if you notice these sides are not parallel, then you won't get the parallel effect uh, when the ray goes in and out. If you have a single color like red, it will do this, or orange, it will do this. If you have white light, it will actually spread into the seven colors of the rainbow with red at the top and a violet at the bottom there. But a single color will bend like that. You can see examples of this if you try this yourself. If you get hold of a broom or a ruler and stick it into water and you look down along the length of the pole, you'll see that the pole appears to bend. And in fact, the, 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 the bath or whatever you put it in actually appears shallower than it really is. Okay, so give that a go if you don't believe me. Uh, if, for example, uh, you stood by the side of, of a swimming pool and you throw a, uh, a coin into the side of the pool, the coin will appear to be higher up in the water than it actually is. In other words, the, the pool will appear shallower than it really is. And that they're showing the mechanism of how it's actually working. About every year, roughly around 50 people uh, drown in water thinking it's much more uh, shallower than it really is and find, in fact, find it it's much deeper. Now, this is going to try to explain to you how refraction works. Uh, it works because light slows down in an optically denser material. Okay, so glass is harder for it to go through, so it slows down. I'm going to use an analogy or a comparison. I want you to imagine you've got a, a, a car coming in there in the bottom left, and it's going along the road. That big rectangle there represents... Uh, I don't know, something like, like water. It's going to go into, into road covered in water or mud. And when it does that, it slows down. Now, you've got the wheels A and B. And of course, the wheel that's going to hit the mud first is wheel B. And when it does that, wheel B will sort of slow down. But A will keep going fast. And that has the effect of causing the car to turn, to twist. Now, at this point here, both wheel A and wheel B are both in the road at the same time, in the mud at the same time, so they'll both go just as fast as each other, so it will travel along that dashed line, okay? Once it's reached this area here, wheel B has now left the mud, and it's able to go fast, but wheel A is still stuck in the mud, so it can't move as fast, so this has the effect of causing the car to, again, twist again, to bend again, or refract again so then it leaves the uh, it leaves the the mud and you can see that is the path it's taken so that is a, a good system for working as to what happens uh, be very careful of this one here sometimes students bend it too far it bends towards the normal but not beyond the normal okay so in this case if you look at ray a I would expect once it refracts for it to bend along the line say two o'clock uh, rather than what's got there around four o'clock. Remember the normal would be roughly at three o'clock, nine o'clock across there, um, but it bends towards the normal, and then it bends away from the normal when it gets faster. So when it gets slower, it bends towards the normal. When it gets faster, it bends away from the normal. Okay. Uh, an exception to this bending principle when it slows down is if you fire the ray at 90 degrees to the block, so along the normal, what actually happens is that A and B hit the mud at the same time, so they both slow down at the same time, and so it keeps on going in a straight line. And of course, when it leaves the glass block or the mud, A and B both speed up at the same time, so it keeps on going in a straight line. So along the normal, it does not refract. Oh, so there we go. That's a, a quick summary of refraction.